everything. Amen. Well, whenever we come to uh, the second coming, we cannot avoid to be excited. Uh, but anyhow, the message needs a calm and sober mind. <laughs> Tonight, you will see, receive a real <coughs> solid message. Uh, don't forget, we are still on the apostle's teaching. In the apostle's teaching, we have pointed out a long, a long point. That is the contents of the apostles' teaching. And the contents of the apostles' teaching is concerning God's New Testament economy. <clears throat> this is the entire teaching of the New Testament from the first page of Matthew to the last page of Revelation. Yeah? But the points in this set of God's New Testament economy is of too many. It is from the incarnation, right, of uh, God to the consummation of the new Jerusalem. Amen. Incarnation of God is in Matthew chapter 1. And the consummation of the New, 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 new Jerusalem is in Revelation chapters 21-22. In between, we have seen a lot. <clears throat> I don't think anyone tonight can recite all those points. If you can, please do it Amen. right now. Hallelujah. Okay, very good, very good. Be, don't, don't be uh, too excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go slowly and clearly and loudly. We we'll all can hear. Amen. God's New Testament economy from the incarnation of God to the consummation of the New Jerusalem. A, the incarnation of the triune God. B, the all-inclusive death of Jesus Christ. C, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. D, the ascension of Christ. E, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for baptizing of all his believers into one body, Amen. to be the body of Christ, Amen. to be the bride of Christ, Amen. to be the new man, Amen. to be the household of God, Amen. to be the temple of God, Amen. to be the church, Amen. to be the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the heavens. Amen. F, the ministry of Christ in his ascension. Amen. G, the second coming of Christ. Amen. H, the rapture of the saints. I, the thousand year kingdom. J, the new Jerusalem. Amen. Yeah. It's marvelous. Now, I don't know what to give you. Now, I'd like to know what you want. What you want? Go to me. We'd like to give you something. Too marvelous. Anyone else can do it? Please do it. Okay, you two sisters should tell me what you want. <coughs> if you say you want Christ, I give you nothing. <laughs> what you want? Teaching, all the you know when they become bound. <laughs> you mean, uh, all the messages yeah. on the apostle teaching. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll give you a hard bound. Uh, very good, huh? Amen. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that you can recite so well. Anyhow, tonight we are on the second coming of Christ. This is big subject. We all know this, right? It is not only in the Bible, but also in Christian talks. Christ is coming, Christ's second coming, 
right? Uh, some use another word, advent, right? A D V N T, right? Like the uh, Sabbath, uh, Seventh Day Adventist, huh? they use the word advent quite much, right? It's also quite good. But anyhow, the clear word still is second coming. Yeah. His first coming was the embodiment, right? Or the incarnation of God. Now, his second coming. The second coming, <clears throat> I cannot speak too much tonight. I just like to point out to you all the crucial points. For the trainees, I would uh, charge you to study it, to keep in mind all the crucial points. Uh, no points on this outline is a waste. You must keep in a good memory for your study of the Bible and also for your future. Small one, the uh, parousia. I'd like to add a word here before parousia. That is the word promised. The promised parousia. This is something promised by the Lord Jesus when he was going to leave us, especially in Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> so it is something promised by the Lord himself, verbally. Uh, this word parousia, of course, you all know this is a Greek word. Uh, the Greek word denotes just a presence. In the uh, Lord's time, that was 2,000 years ago, suppose a dignified person, dignified person coming to a certain place, and that coming is termed parousia. His presence. For instance, the king is coming. And the king's coming is his parousia to the people. The king's presence. Uh, this is a word not so low, but rather high. It denotes a kind of a coming, the presence of a dignified person to us. So it equals coming, right? In all these verses, like Matthew 24, 3, 27, 37, 39, and so forth, the word coming, 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 is parousia. You must remember. And I must let you know, the Lord's parousia, his whole, complete parousia. Because today, even we enjoy the Lord's presence, don't we? but it is not a complete presence, right? Today, his presence is just in the spirit, Amen. but not in the body. One day, he'll be with us, Amen. right? Not only in the spirit, but also in the body. Amen. I do hope, whether I would be allowed to do this or not, I don't know, but I do hope Someday I will touch his body. Amen. I'll be satisfied. <laughs> I am just a Demas. Right? Th Thomas, sorry. I'm just a Thomas. I like to touch, not just to see, not just to feel. We do feel, even tonight here, right now, huh? we do feel the Lord's presence, don't we? We feel his presence, but we cannot touch. But one day, we'll touch. Amen. We'll touch his physical body. Amen. A resurrected physical body. A physical body in resurrection. What is that? I don't know until we see and touch. Amen. Right? That I call the complete presence. Amen. The complete presence. <clears throat> now, small a. Christ, it is Christ's complete presence with his believers. Today, like Matthew 28, the last verse, verse 20 says, I will be with you. Right? Right? Every day. And day after day. Every day, including today, the Lord is with us. And his presence is here. Yet, we cannot touch that presence. And none of the unbelievers believe that we speak the truth. 
Then you say, you speak nonsense. Where is Jesus? You see, Jesus is with you. I cannot see him. Neither I can touch him. But that day will come. The non-believers could not say this word again. We'll see here. Here is he. Right? This is a complete presence. Not just a spiritual presence in a sense. Okay. B. And these presence, these parousia, is a long one. Not just to, to be present with us for about uh, uh, 10 minutes. Suppose uh, Mr. Bush will be here, right? He's a dignified person. And he's been here, just his parousia. Uh, he's coming, his presence. The most, I would guess, about 10 minutes, right? If we could have the present Bushy here for, with us for an hour, we'll, uh, ooh, <laughs> right? But the Lord of Parousia, you know, will last, to my figuration, probably three and a half years. You know, the, uh, uh, Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, does, does teach us a period of seven years, right? And that will be the last seven years of this present age. We are in an age which will end with a particular seven days which is called a wake, a wake of seven years, right? The last seven years. I must tell you, a great part of the Bible, especially in the New Testament, was written just around or about those seven years, a wake. And this is mentioned, this is mentioned, right? Do you know the number three and a half years? It's mentioned in different ways. Number one, in uh, two, one and a half. What is this? Three and a half years. Two, one and a half. What is this? Three and a half years. Uh, it says, what? Well, Forty-two months. What is 42 months? Three years, right? Oh, it says 1,260 days, 1,260 days. What is this, right? This is <coughs> two and a half years. <coughs> or it says in the midst of this week. That means in the middle of the seven years. That is two and a half years. So uh, when it says in the midst of the seven uh, of the week, it doesn't refer too much to the first half, first three and a half years, but it refer, refers mainly to the second half, Amen. three and a half years. Amen. In the Bible, you don't have all these terms. Keep in mind. <clears throat> okay. The Lord's prosia uh, will last about three and a half years. So, it begins from the rapture of the man-child in Revelation 12 and verse 5. A woman, a universal woman. I don't have the time to cover too much. That universal woman indicates a corporate people of God's choosing. God, do, do, he does have a people of his choice. He selected the people, right? And these people corporately is signified by an universal woman. You know that woman, right? And that woman, Magunesh, has the son as you would, right? Then it has the moon. And it has also the 12 stars. That means heavenly woman on the earth, yet 
he sees very heavily sun, moon, and stars, right? You know this, when you go to Revelation chapter 12, you better read all the notes, you, got, you will get it. Okay, out of these, God chosen people, a man child, a corporate one, corporate child with the born. And that corporate child is the embodiment of all the co overcomers. Not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. You have to know Abel, right? Uh, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, they all will be included in that man child. <coughs> the man child will be born. <coughs> and that man child will be raptured to the heavens to the throne of God. You read the whole chapter of Revelation 12, you could see that was before the three and a half years. Because after the rapture of that man child, there will be still three and a half years. Could you see this? Amen. So the Lord's parousia will begin from the rapture of the overcomers. Um, then also the rapture of the first fruit in Revelation 14 verses 1 to 4. The first fruit will be there. Where? At Zion, among them. Right? In the heavens. <clears throat> this will be rapture to the to the heavens, small one and a half, and Mount Zion, not Mount Zion in Jerusalem, but Mount Zion in heavens, like uh, what Hebrew 12 talks about, then two have before the throne of God. Right? Keep in mind. Uh, the first fruits are also uh, a body of overcomers. So different overcomers. Then small c, and this parousia of the Lord will end with Christ appearing on the earth. If you read Second Thessalonians two eight, would you turn to that? You read, it, it's a particular uh, expression there. It says there what? The Lord's appearing, the appearing of his coming. The appearing of his coming. Actually, his appearing will be his coming. But it says the appearing of his coming, that means his, the appearing of his parousia. Amen. And, uh, uh, I think uh, tonight Roger is here and Brother Jason, they all are here, they can tell you, uh, as I studied, that this appearing in Greek implies shining. It can shine. His appearing is a kind of shining. Right? You know, whatever is bright uh, with some light, when this matter comes, his appearing is a kind of shining. The shining of Christ's parousia. And this shining will kill, will, will slay, will uh, kill whom? Antichrist. Antichrist will be killed just by the shining appearance Amen. of the Lord's parousia. Right. Firstly, the parousia is there, but in the heavens, right. it will be secret, it will be hidden in the heavens. Then that parousia will come to the air, on the way. There is still somewhat uh, secret from people's eyes. But that parousia will have an appearance, and that appearance will shine, and that appearance will do something. 
will kill Antichrist. So you have the appearing of the Persia. Isn't this a particular term? You have to realize this. The appearing of the Parousia, the appearing of his coming, right? Okay, small one and a half, and this appearing will be <laughs> around the globe. Amen. You may say, brother, how could you do this? Well, Matthew 24, 27, you turn to that, you read. The Lord's parousia, the appearing of his parousia, like the, what? Like what? Lightning. You know, in the raining day, under a cinder, there was, there is, what, what? What's it called? Lightning. Lightning. The Lord's word in Matthew 24, 27 says, his parousia, the appearing of his parousia, will be like a lightning from the east to the west. Amen. Let me check you. Why the Lord didn't say from north to south? <laughs> you see? If he would say from north to south, that is nonsense. All right? But from <laughs> today we know. I think 2,000 years ago, Peter and John, they didn't know that the globe is a ball. <laughs> And they still hold, held the thought the earth is flat. Right? We know this, right? Before Columbus, there was not such a school, right? But now we know. You see, grow. So this, uh, this lightning, this shining, this appearing of his parousia is around the globe. Amen. Otherwise, we'll get trouble. If it's not a matter around the globe, then now we are in America. Suppose he comes to, to the earth, we see him in America. Then how about those in Asia? You tell me, how about those in Asia? You see the Bible? This is the Bible. Amen. You can read around the globe. <laughs> From east to west, that means what? Around the globe. You can read it. Anyone who gets it. Matthew 24, 27. Anyone who gets it. As the lightning comes forth from the east and, and shines, shines to, to the, the west. west. You see, and shines to the west. Amen. Amen. So well, shall the coming of the Son of Man, man be. Amen. Right. Okay. <laughs> Just this phrase is hard to explain. From east shine to the west. Where the east? <laughs> you tell me, where the east? Where's the east? Where's the east? China. And where's the west? New York. <laughs> <coughs> well, now, I consider Los Angeles, west coast of, of the USA, is the uttermost part of the earth. Why? Because Columbus from Europe came to the Western world, to America, landing at East Coast. Then the followers marching, 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 marching through how many years until we are here on the West Coast. So this is the edge of the earth. <laughs> Am I right? Then when we take a plane to go to Taipei, we go from the other side of the globe. Am I right? You think about it. How about? <laughs> think about it. But then the Lord will come and his policy will have a kind of lightning, Amen. shining, Amen. right, Amen. from the east to the west. Amen. It's around the globe. Amen. Okay, small to half, seen by all men. Amen. Again, turn to uh, Revelation. To read the Bible is not so easy. You better turn to Revelation 1-7. I hope that 
By doing this, you young brothers and sisters will learn how to study the, the Holy Word. <clears throat> Don't study it so loosely and so lightly. So now, verse 7 of Revelation 1 says, Behold, that means see. Right? Behold, that means see. He comes with the clouds. And every eye, every eye, Amen. every eye, Amen. the eyes of the Americans, the eyes of the Chinese, Amen. all the eyes on this earth Amen. shall see him. Amen. Amen. Every eye shall see him. Amen. Then those also, that means before every eye, there are those also who pursued him. This uh, represents the Jews. Who pierced him? The Jews. You see, every eye refer to all the nations. And those refer to whom? To the Jews who pierced him. And all the tribes. <laughs> Which tribes? The twelve tribes. Of the land. What land? The good land shall will over him. Amen. Not all the nations will will over him. Right. Only 12 tribes. Where? Around to Jerusalem. Right. You better read Zechariah tells. Zechariah tell, tell you this. Tell, tells you this. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> what? Who will see him? Every eye, especially those at Jerusalem, Christ Persia will land on the earth. Where do you know? That's right, Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Yes, he's come to the earth, but the very spot he would land will be Jerusalem. But it is a matter of the globe. Very interesting, right? Okay, this is the uh, uh, <coughs> sketch. Huh? I just give you what is the parousia, what does it no denote, and then. Uh, when it begins and when it ends. Now we come to small two. The secret aspect of Christ's parousia, of Christ's presence coming in the heavens, the secret aspect of Christ's parousia, his coming in the heavens. You read Matthew 24, 36 to 43. If you don't have this concept, you can never understand these few verses. Matthew 24, 36 to 43. You could never understand. Uh, then you can read it. <clears throat> and this secret is in heavens where Christ is. Right? Revelation 14, 1 denote this. Christ is standing on the Mount Zion. And the first fruits of 144,000 also stand there with Christ. Amen. B, where God is on his throne. Revelation 12, 5 tells us the overcomers will be raptured to the throne of God. That means before <clears throat> the throne, where God is on his throne. Secret there. Then, small three, on the way. Have you heard? On the way, the parousia of Christ will travel. Amen. Will travel on the way. He will travel. Or the parousia, his presence will travel Amen. from the throne of God in the third heaven. He starts travel then to the air, in air. 
Um, <clears throat> you can read Revelation 10.1. It says, Christ will be descending to the air, closed with a crowd. Still something secret, closed, covered. Later on, he will be sitting on the, on the crowd. You see, firstly, he will be coming down, clothed in the cloud. Then, a little later, he will be sitting on the cloud. That will become open. Uh, on the way of his parousia, a Christ being clothed with the cloud in the air, right? Revelation 10, 1. To rapture there, you see, there he will, uh -huh, he will linger in there for a while. How many days? I tried my best. I couldn't find out. But at least not just a few days. He will do a lot of things there. Number one, he will rapture. He will rapture whom? The majority of the of the believers, including the living ones by then, and all the dead ones, and including all the dead saints of the Old Testament. <clears throat> uh, this is fully revealed to us in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17. Then also it describes in details by the parable of harvest in Revelation 14, 14 to 16. You read this portion, two portions, you will get a, a clear idea, right? Even though the mantle was ruptured, right, to the heavens, and the first fruits also ruptured to the heavens, right, before the two and a half years, yet still the majority of the believers we're not yet, right? And they will be raptured when Christ's parousia travels from the heavens to the air and will linger in the air. In that lingering time, Christ raptured. All his believers. Have you noticed that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, 17 says, we will be taken up into clouds in the air. You read that. You turn to that. You can see it. Right? Now, this shows you the difference. The man child will be raptured to the throne in the heavens of God. Right? And the, the first fruit will be raptured to the Mount Zion in heavens, but the majority of the saints will be raptured into the clouds in the air, right? Have you got it? Amen. Then read to us. Which verse, by the way? 16, uh, 17. 17. Then we who are living, who remain, shall be caught up at the same time together with them in clouds. In clouds. Amen. In clouds. Amen. 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 And me into a meeting of the Lord in the air. In the air. In the crowd. In the air. In the air. Let me share with you. Do you expect to be raptured? Yes. Tell me. Yes. To where? To, to the throne yeah. of to the crowd. No, no, no. You like to enter you like you like to enter into the crowd or you like to go to the throne? No. No. To say this easy, it's a throne, I can say it. But you must overcome. Amen. To the crowd is somewhat lower. To the throne, somewhat higher. Amen. That's the peak. You climb a mountain to reach at the peak. That's not so easy. You have to climb. Right? Then you reach at the peak. Amen. If you couldn't do it, you just remain here in the valley until someone will take you up 
to the air. Yeah, it was away. It is away from the earth, but still not too much away from the earth. So in the air and in the crowd, I don't like to be there. Are you clear? Let me check with you. You all have been Christian for years, right? You all have studied the New Testament. Have you found all this? Have you found all this? The conversion. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm just teaching what I wrote in that book. Well, this is not man's Im imagination. This is not my imagination. This is the teaching according to the black and white in the holy pages. Amen. Right, so clear. Amen. Right? <laughs> Do you know, <clears throat> if you will be one among the major majority of the saints, when you will be into the crowd, you'll see Paul there. <laughs> you'll see Paul there, Peter there, they were already there. <laughs> but you are this late. I'm all right. This means a lot, okay? Uh, well, he, all the parousia of Christ is lingering in the air, Christ raptured. Christ takes up, right? Takes up the majority, not the first fruit, but the harvest. You see, the first fruit is in the beginning of chapter 14 of Revelation. And the harvest is at the end. Between the first fruit and the harvest, you read, you could see the three and a half years. You could see Antichrist came in, uh, comes in and so forth. You could see this. It's clear. Right? In other, other words, Revelation 14 tells us four things. Number one, the rapture of the first fruit to mount down in the heavens. Number two, the appearance, the coming out of Antichrist to damage the word. The number three, uh, the harvest. Right? Then, number four, what? Ah, uh, the, uh, the uh, reaping, the reaping of the grapes, the evil people. You know, wheat in typology or in figure signifies God's people. Grapes signify the evil persons. There will, there will be a reaping, a harvest of God's people, a reaping of the evil ones. That will be what? That will be, that will include Antichrist and his army. All the evil ones, Christ will just destroy them. Amen. The blood will be 600, what? <laughs> Quite deep. That much blood. <clears throat> it formed, it will form a kind of blood river. <clears throat> That was the joy of all the evil persons on the church. Four things in that one chapter, okay? Now, <clears throat> after this rapture, that all the God chosen people, whether from the Old Testament or from the New Testament, will be there. In there. And Christ will set up his judgment seat. Don't forget, that will be not a grave, a throne of grace. Amen. That will be a seat of judgment. Amen. Generally speaking, nearly all the believers got poison. To have a general idea that when Christ comes, everything okay. I'll be happy. If you have overcome everything, you'll be happy, no doubt about it. But, there's a big but. How about? <laughs> you got defeated in your family. Even you got defeated in church life. You got defeated in business. You got defeated in every way. There'd be no problem. You read Matthew 24, 25. 
the Lord says, his slaves. If the slaves will be faithful when he comes, he will surely reward them. If they are not faithful, but rather they fight with the co-slaves, what? Matthew 4, 20. Matthew 24 tells us clearly the Lord will punish him. Amen. Right? Yes. Then Matthew 25, the Lord asked the master, right, giving his talents to all his slaves. Right? One, he gives five talents, then the other two, and the other one. Then he went away from the earth to heavens. And he will come back, when he comes back, he will collect his slaves to give him an account. You see, to give him an account. Where? You must say, at the judgment seat. The Lord will collect all to be in front of his judgment seat to give an account. Then the five, the five talent man comes. He earned, right, another five. So he got the reward. And the two will be the same. But the one, talent one, will come saying this and thing that. The Lord says what? Evil servant, right? Then what? Put this one into the darkness. You see? This is here revealed. Right? Scoville, Dr. Scoville, the, the writer of the Scoville Russian Bible, <clears throat> they followed, they followed brother in teaching saying that the evil slave is a false Christian. If, if that one is a false Christian, I don't believe 99% Christian all are false. <clears throat> How a false Christian <clears throat> could be ruptured in air. Well, the Lord Jesus made a mistake, make a mistake <laughs> to take up the false ones to the air, to his judgment seat. It's all together not logical. Sixty years I got to read this. It was in 1933 when I traveled the old capital, Peking, in China. That was 1933. I bought a scoffle Rams Bible from uh, an overseas Chinese who got saved to be a brethren, a brethren member in uh, Jamaica, you know, British Jamaica. And he went back to Peking and he set up a book stand and he was selling Bibles. Then I bought one copy of Scofield from him. And from that time, I used called Scofield. I even I small uh, potato by reading the Bible. I found out Scofield was right, was wrong to say this. Right? I don't believe even you young girls tonight you could differentiate, right? So don't say if Christ comes to gay today, you have no problem. Don't say this. I'm a little concerned. I may still have problems at the judgment seat, right? You criticize others. You gossip so much, right? In Matthew 12 says, the Lord says, even the word of a gossip will be, uh -huh. you have to present at the time of judgment, right? <clears throat> so what? So here, it says to judge all the saints at the judgment seat. The term, the judgment seat of Christ, is in 2 Corinthians 5.10. And the judgment seat is also mentioned in Romans 14.10. But there it says the judgment seat of God. The judgment seat of Christ is just the judgment seat of God. Then I give you 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Paul says, even I don't feel I'm wrong anything, but I cannot justify myself. My judge will be the Lord. 
Let's all wait till he comes. He will judge everything. Amen. At where? At his judgment seat. Then Matthew 25, I told already, in verse 19, Paul, uh, the Lord says, he will collect his servants to give him an account that should be at the judgment seat. And so forth, right? Luke 19, 9, 15 says the same thing. Okay, at that judgment, the Lord will give reward here. <clears throat> okay, I would ask you to go back to add something, huh? Just above this C, at the end of B, to rapture the majority of the believers, here you add a cross, a phrase, into crowds in there. Majority of the believers into crowds in there. Okay, now at uh, the end of small and a half under C for reward, you add to his, not to his, to the overcomers. For this, you better read Revelation 11, 18b. There it says, there will be time for the Lord to reward his saints. Luke 14, 14 says, at the time of the resurrection of the just, the Lord will give people reward. Then Matthew 24, 45 to 46, and Matthew 25, 20 to 30, 23, and Luke 19, 16 to 90. You read all these verses, you cannot avoid the reward. Then small to half for punishment, here you add, over the defeated believers. Reward is to the overcomers, punishment is over the defeated believers. You have all these verses. <clears throat> now, we come to the third thing the law will do in the lingering of parousia in the air. The third thing is to marry his overcomers. Amen. At the judgment seat, he, may, he will make clear who will be the overcomers, who will be the defeated ones. Then he will marry the overcomers, Amen. leaving the defeated ones in shame. Do you know this? <coughs> you better read Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 9. You read those three verses, you will find out this thought. Christ will marry. Firstly, before the thousand years, only the overcomers, leaving the defeated ones in a position of punishment, in a position to be disciplined. They are, they are not perfected, completed yet. So they need to be disciplined. Small one and a half, the marriage or the wedding will be on the way of Christ's parousia, in the air. But small two have the wedding feast. We all know this, right? Following the wedding, even today, the same thing, right? You will have a feast. At least you will have a, what, refreshment. <laughs> the wedding feast will be where? In the kingdom of a thousand years, I tell you, that face will last 1,000 years in the eyes of God just one day. The feasting day of Christ will be <clears throat> the 1,000 years of the kingdom as one day. The entire kingdom is a face. And I give you the reference, Luke 14, 8, Matthew 22, 2. 11 to 14, those two chapters tell us about the feast, the wedding feast of Christ. The wedding will transpire in Revelation 19, verses 7 and 8. 
then verse 9 there will be the wedding feast. This is the way to study the Bible. Then you understand it thoroughly. This is all talk about what? The secret aspect, including a part of the way, right? That secret parousia was traveling, right? And the traveling crash lingers in air for some time, I believe, not just a short time. There, he has to do three things, to rapture all the majority of the saints, and then to set up the judgment seat to judge, to judge thousands of believers, right? And also, to marry, Amen. to get married. Christ will get married there, Amen. to marry his overcomers, Amen. right? This is a secret. Either secret in the heavens or secret in the air. Now, small for the open aspect of Christ, Christ's parousia. Uh, I quote you already. No, I quote it again. Matthew 24, 27. And the, opening, uh, the open aspect of Christ's parousia is just like lightning shining from east to the west. Small a around Jerusalem, where Antichrist and his armies will be. You may ask a brother, how you bold, how, how could it be so bold to say, around Jerusalem, Zechariah 12, 9 tells us, Antichrist and his following army will what will be seized, be seized Jerusalem, surrounding Jerusalem to fight against Jerusalem. Nearly they will overcome the Israel by that time Christ coming down upon him. <clears throat> okay, Zechariah 12, 9, then Revelation you will read 19, verses 19 to 21. There, here, in Revelation 19, 19 to 21, says clearly, Antichrist and the false prophet and, the, and those following them will be there, Christ as the, what, heaven warrior, with his married bride, you see, it's clear there. Then you have a particular verse, Matthew 24, 28. We do read where the corpse is, the vultures will come. Who will be the corpse? Antichrist and all his followers in the eyes of God. They will be the corpse, the dead bodies. Uh, who will be the vultures? Right. Eagles. Christ and the overcomers. Amen. Christ and his bride. Amen. They will be the vultures. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Then B, eight. This is eight. Firstly, the Antichrist and his army will be around Jerusalem, but now at Jerusalem, where the tribe of Israel will be. Right? I read to you already, Revelation 1, 7, those also, right, who pierce him, shall see him. And then they will will over him. That means they will repent to him. Then Zechariah 12, 10 to 11 says the same thing. Okay? Now small c, Christ and the overcomers will come to defeat and destroy. Christ will do this together with his newly married overcomers 
to defeat and destroy whom? Antichrist and his followers. I give you all these verses, right? Including 1470 to 20, that is reaping of the grapes. All those evil per persons were <clears throat> like, in, like grew grapes <clears throat> becoming rape. Now they are ready to be raped by God through Christ and his overcomers. Small d, to save the whole house of Israel. Amen. Romans 11 tells us this. And also Zechariah 12, 10 to 14, describe, describe this matter. The tribes were weeping. Tribe by tribe were weeping. The house of David will be weeping. That means to repent before Christ. Then at that time, Christ saved the whole, the whole house of Israel. Now, he, to judge the nations, in Matthew 25, right? After Christ came to the earth in his glory, he was set up his throne, throne to judge the nations, to divide them into sheep and goats. By doing this, Christ is to prepare the sheep, the good ones, huh? to be the people on the earth in the millennium. This is in Matthew 25. Now we come to the new life. Huh? The new, uh, new life is to cause Satan be bound and cast into the abyss. And the abyss is Bartholam, Bartholam's pit. Uh, a pit without bottom. This abyss, too, too deep. Satan will be uh, bound and cast into that abyss for 1,000 years. It was not directed by Christ, but no doubt it was caused by Christ coming. Christ coming will exercise a kind of atmosphere that Satan will be caught and cast into a beast. <clears throat> the new G, new G is to bring the kingdom to the earth. Amen. In uh, Daniel 7, we are, tell, we are told that Christ as the Son of Man uh, comes to, to God to receive the kingdom from the Father. The Luke 19, 30, 13 also tells us this. He is going there to receive kingdom. When he received the kingdom, he'll come back with the kingdom. Then Revelation 11, 15 tells us the earth will become the kingdom of Christ. Amen. Then he will establish his kingdom on this earth as the kingdom of the thousand years, that is, the so-called millennium, right? Now, finished. Amen. Christ is come. Amen. Right? And all the enemies, all the proper soft. Amen. And all the proper peoples prepared. So he set up the kingdom. That's the millennium, which we covered already. Right? Now I stop here. Try to say something. This, even uh, so much in detail, still I consider this as a sketch. Not that adequate in details. But you need to collect all these things together. This is just like a, a big puzzle, right? You put all the pieces together. You put, if it doesn't look so nice, that's wrong. You have to put it again until you fix everything, so fitting. Then you get a full picture, right? I spent, uh, I must tell you, over 60 years to get this one. And tonight, before I came, I told my wife, this was the last writing. Maybe something more in the future, I don't know. Up tonight, this is the last writing. On the second coming, I must tell you, this is the best. Amen. Now, even this outline is better than all the writings I put out in America, in English. This is the best one. Yeah, it's so brave, so, so sharp, and so much in proper order, okay? I'm sailing.
my cargo. <laughs> okay, now go ahead to say something, right? A lot of good things for us to say. Yeah. Any point you can make a message from from this point, from this this outline. So easy, just pick up a point. I can tell you, you can easily make 50 messages out of this outline. From east to west is a good point. Right. Keep a message, <laughs> right? Right. Okay. Don't look at me. Just <laughs> speak. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.